Slap some fabric on it. Yeah, let's just do it. And uh, should I use the same fabric or should I use a different fabric? I could, do I have this? I don't think this is long enough. Nope, it's a shorty piece. Um, let me grab another piece of that fabric. Yeah, 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 okay. And let's just do a little cut here. All right, all right. do the tear. Mm -hmm. So here, here, and here. Gonna go to about there. Let's do a little cut there. Let's see what we got. This should shave it down to about the right size we need. Let me get rid of all that. Okay, so now we have this. Let's get rid of that. I hope this is long enough now. I think it is. Okay. Yeah, see, I, uh, I, wore to, I wore through my spine, which wasn't the wisest thing. So I think I'm just gonna go in and repair that first with some Fabrifix. Bad crafter, bad crafter. But uh, this is just a little project for me, so I'm not too worried about it. And um, I'm learning as I go. And uh, that's 99% of this stuff is you don't know until you try. And, or you forgot how you did it, <laughs> which is probably the case here. And uh, you just carry on, you know, that's what you do. Um, and uh, it's kind of sort of gluing okay. It's not the greatest because I think the paper is, um, you know, leafy in there and it's just kind of coming apart. So I think we're gonna have to do the, the we're gonna have to do the fabric. Right. The colors are not exactly matching, but we'll just go with it. All right, so I'm gonna put a piece there down to there, cut you up where you need to be. Okay, there. I might have to have a little more come off. All right, Fabrifix, come in and do your thing. Don't fail me now. I, it's funny, I think people think I'm sponsored by Fabrifix, but no, Fabrifix has never heard of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, if you buy it through my Amazon store, yes, yes, I get paid for that, but uh, it's a commission thingy, but it's not like Fabrifix reached out to me or I reached out to the Fabrifix company and said, hey, hey, I want to promote your glue. No, I just, I like the glue. I like to tell you guys what I use and you guys ask me a lot what I use, so I figure it just all makes sense, you know? I can, uh, um, you know, show you what I've, I've learned and you guys show me what you've learned and sometimes you let me know of other things that are also good or better and stuff like that and I learn from you guys. So I'm so appreciative of that because I'm, I'm just here playing with the papers like you guys are, you know, and I wanna learn new things too and and try different things. Um, so we, we share with each other our ideas and I think that's that's a good healthy thing. Okay, let's see what we got here now. All right. Okay, now let's try to apply this on evenly. Doing some trimming. 46, let's see, 30 times the other one. Okay, uh, lots of hairs here. Oh my goodness, very, this is a hairy beast. Yes, all right, and we're going on. We're going on, I hope we're, I'm hoping we're in the middle. Probably might check this way. Let's see if you're in the middle. I'm not in the middle. I'm never in the middle. My random guess is, is never, I never, <laughs> I never guess lucky. You have to go and adjust. Okay, that's okay. That, you get a few seconds here. Okay, here we go. Bring that down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna, so I'm gonna glue that on the front here because I gotta do something with it, right? So I'm gonna put some glue in this valley. There's a little valley here where the spine is. Put some down in there so it'll tuck down in there. And then I'm gonna come out here and glue the thing that I'm gluing down, like my original advice that I didn't follow at all. Now I'm gonna follow it, yeah. So I'm got a little bit of logic going on here. Not total logic, but a little. Okay, there we go. Yeah, all right, now let's flip this over. And we're gonna do the same thing here. All right, and here. And then we're gonna glue the thing that's being glued. Gluing the thing that's being glued. Can you see? Oh, so that seems like really far away, isn't it? Okay, we're almost done though. Um, hang in there. All right, gluing it down. Going in the little valley and, and valleying down. Try not to get glue on your main piece. Yeah, that might be a disaster. Okay, as it is, it's a disaster, just like I thought. Yeah, okay. But it's okay, because it's a grunge look. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. so I tell myself. I'm just gonna get rid of it, because uh, it's gonna be a rough feeling, and I like the whole thing to feel smooth and good in the hand. 
That's a prerequisite in my department. It's got to feel good in the hands. All right. And if you get fabric glue, fabric tack glue, or yeah, fabric tack or fabric fix glue early enough in the game, it will roll right off. Yeah. And uh, I'll just come there and darken that up a little bit again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. Okay, so now we have the covered spine. I want me to do the ridges on this side. Go back and forth and put my fingernails in the divot. Oh, you're so far away, can't see anything. Oh, that's really close. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm using my fingernails. You could use a bone folder just to go in the valley there. And um, back it up so you can see what we're doing. I guess we're going back to where we were. Okay, so inside we have a lined caddy with material on the very bottom. We have fabric edges, and we have uh, a fabric-covered spine because we, um, we failed spine 101. And uh, now I just have to cover these edges around here so I'm not looking at orangey red. And I think what I'm going to use is some good old <coughs> gilding paste. Here he is, right there. Hang on. Okay, he went down the side of the house, so hopefully all is well. Finger tool? Nope, he's back, hang on. Okay, he's in the backyard, so we are ready to progress. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some of this. Go back a little bit so you can see. No. Uh. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go and cover the edges with my finger and the gilding paste. I'm using a gold and uh, it's just going to knock back all of that reddy orange color. You want to get it on both sides. This is kind of a messy process for me. Uh, maybe neater if you do it. You probably should wear gloves. Okay, just saying that. Um, and uh, but I like to get in the nook and crannies. Nooks and crannies, like the uh, English muffins. Remember that? The butter goes in the nooks and crannies. Who remembers that? Hmm? Um, Thomas's, I think it was Thomas's English muffins. Yeah, this is a pretty easy thing to do, this gilding paste thing, and it kind of lends itself to the grungy, messy look, almost like a um, Baroque brocade sort of overly gilded, golded, but in a reckless sort of way look. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's an art style. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, getting in there, getting all that stuff covered. I don't like that pinky or that orange to show because it's contrasting with the little pink in my flowers. I'm taking, I'm taking issue with that. <laughs> Do not contrast with my flowers. Um, okay. And as you, as this stuff dries, it um, adheres more and more and you can go back and buff it up a little bit. And then you can even apply more if you got a little bald spot or you notice a little area missing. Okay. And I already did, well, most of it I can see, I didn't completely do the other side, but I already did the other side because I wanted to show you what the finished thing looks like after all that's done. So I'm, I'm demonstrating one side and then while he was lawn, uh, lawn driving, while he was lawn driving out there, I um, did the back just to, uh, so I could show you that what that looks like when it's done. But it's the same process. Finger tool, yep. Then to get in there, okay. So let me see, did I miss some? Yeah. It's always good to pick up your pieces and look at them from all angles. Bottom included, yeah. Bottoms up. Oh, we need a little more glue in there. Yeah, definitely need a little more glue in there. See how that, oh, can you see? That's coming apart there a little bit. Okay. And when I'm more gentle on this piece, it will have time to adhere. I might have to go back and, and uh, do that as well. So now um, we've got something that looks like this. It's all gilded gold around and uh, I don't really know why I used this one because it really doesn't go, but maybe I can make it match more by um, adding the gold to it. Let's just see. M we'll make it look like the rest of it. You have to play with the rest of the, your friends. Yep. I'm gonna keep up with the Joneses here. Look like everybody else. There you go. All right, that's it. It is knocking it back. I'm, I'm liking that better. Okay, coming along here. Distressing this up a little bit more with the gold. I don't know what I'm doing. Just rubbing it on at this point. But it, it's um, definitely bringing it into a more monochrome sort of 
look. Oh, he's back in the front now. How nice. Okay. Actually, I totally appreciate my long guy because uh, that's, that's a hard job in the Florida summer. It's a hard job any time of year, but in Florida summer, especially so. So, uh, you know, thank you very much, Mr. Long Guy, because it would be me out there doing it otherwise. So I do appreciate that. And I'm just going to go and knock all this down. And you can do this with paints. You can do this. So don't think because your, your um, material doesn't go exactly. I mean, you can, you can put um, distress inks on here. You can put acrylic paint, um, watercolor paint, anything you want to knock it down and give it more of a distressed look and maybe have it be more cohesive with your your final piece um let's see where are we 54 well i've just been yapping up a storm here and um maybe i even want to do something here maybe maybe i do because this really has no rhyme or reason for anything else so i'm just sticking some in here just knocking it back a bit knocking it back well, i'm going through a lot of my my soon to be ending gold gilding paste well, never to be seen or heard from again because I think the company stopped making it and it really was my favorite paste but I have found a good substitute I think Pentart makes a good one and uh, I haven't tried the Nouveau ones but I think some people said they were good um let get that in there you can even use a little paintbrush to get in those little really tiny spots if you need to yeah okay so I've knocked, knocked that down a bit see this is more in your face hobby lot not hobby lobby but holly hobby and we're just going to knock that down, make a little grungier. Yeah, the grungy gold Baroque look. Yeah. Okay, and just get the tops of those so they look like they're grungified too. And get in here and grunge that up. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Now we're all in more of a, a cohesive color group. There we go. Okay, so this is my back, and that is upside down. Yeah, there's no really no back. I guess it's a, it's it's a it's a caddy, so it's more like this. Yes, and there's this side, and then there's this side. So there you go. That's how to make the little caddy, and um, you know, not the easiest project in the world, but definitely um, useful. And you could store all sorts of fun things in here. So I hope you had fun. I hope you learned maybe a few new techniques you hadn't tried before. And uh, you might want to give them a go. And uh, feel free to come in here and hue this up even more with different colored inks and things like that. And that might be very fun. But she took on a whole new look. And, um, you know, that's kind of fun. Taking something that doesn't, you know, it doesn't look anything like the finished product once you're done. So it's a good uh, reuse, recycle, refurbish, um, repurpose. Um, you know, to, to use with these uh, things that we have hanging around the house, maybe some old book nobody reads anymore, uh, you know, um, the fascinating um, ins and out of the washer dryer industry or something like that, you know, and you just, nobody's going to read this book again. So it's from 1974 and you just think, it's okay, you're going to be turned into a caddy today. Yes, yes, you are. I'm going to just put lots in there and I'll glue that down more. Okay, so there you go, folks. I hope you like it. She was fun to make, and I really enjoyed spending time with you. And um, if you found value here, please like, subscribe, and share, and click the notification bell to be uh, notified of my videos. Um, uh, favorite tools and supplies uh, you can find in my Amazon store, as well as all, all sorts of other places around town. But if you can't find it, check out the Amazon store. I might get you started on link searching. And uh, I have an Etsy shop, which I have some vintage digital kits in a whole, I think there's 50 uh, different ones in there right now. So feel free to check those out. You might find some fun things that you want to print out and use in your journals. And um, uh, what else? Oh, sometimes I will surprise you with some journals or some, uh, you know, stationary sets or, or different things that might pop in there um, coming up as we're getting closer to the holidays. And uh, join up for my free monthly emailed newsletter. You get a free digital image sent to you monthly along with a checklist of supplies, journal tips, and a note from the bookmaker. My videos come out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. My playlists are linked down below if you're looking for categories of topics or at the end of most of my videos and you'll also find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, Finkton, and Lacebook. And uh, uh, you, <laughs> if you haven't joined the Facebook group, come on over and join it. It's a lot of fun. We're doing weekly and monthly challenges and over there and you're welcome just to lurk or hang out and have fun with us and ask questions, everything related to junk journals and making junk journals. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Take care and have a happy day. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.